As we said before, and so many folks may not have heard, uh, you're way a little bit farther back in the in the group there, but. Um, so Native Americans were the first ones to figure out that, hey, you could take sap from a maple tree and turn it into a nice sugary delight. Um, so before we had industrialization and everything like that, um, we, before we had tin and iron, uh, before we had plastics and whatnot, uh, what the Native Americans would do to be able to tap a tree is they would come on up to a maple. Now, I don't have a fancy tomahawk like the Native Americans would carry it all, but what the Native Americans do is they would come on up to a maple tree and they would have some sort of vessel. Um, and who thinks when I say vessel, we mean boat? All right, you guys are all smart. I love you all. Um, so they would have some sort of vessel, some sort of just little carrying container uh, that they could collect the sap from. So they would take their tomahawk, they would give a nice strike against the tree and they wouldn't want to go very deep because the sap's only flowing just under the bark layer. It's not flowing through the middle hardwood there. So they would give it a strike, a little laceration, almost like if you got yourself a paper cut on your fingers. That's what they would basically do to the tree. And if you <coughs> blood coming out like it does in your finger, we'd have sap coming out of the maple tree there. So they would have some sort of vessel that they would hold against a the tree there to collect the sap in. And then what they would do, and they would have a lot of these around is it would fill up with water. They would set it off safely somewhere to the side. They would grab another one, fill it up some more, set it off safely to the side. And what they would do instead of boiling like we currently do now, is they would let mother nature help out. So they would leave those little shallow vessels out overnight. And I'm sure they would hope that we don't have little critters coming on by and taking drinks out of that. but when it got cold and below freezing at night, the water would freeze in the sap, um, but the sugars would remain behind. So they would then come back the next morning, they would scrape that thin layer of ice off, kind of dip a finger in there, and like that, nope, not ready yet. Maybe they'd leave it another night or two. And when they were happy with the sugar content that they had, that would be their syrup. So it wouldn't be as thick as what we have now, um, I don't think. I've never actually tried this process myself, so maybe I'll try that for next year uh, and see how that works out. Uh, but that was the very first way they would make it. Um, so then we had settlers come on over to uh, the New World there, and the Native Americans were kind enough to teach them about their process and how that all works there. But Native Ameri or, uh, settlers brought with them tools and materials that the Native Americans didn't. So that's when we started seeing that taps would be made. Um, so I tapped this tree yesterday and if you want to take a closer look there, you can see it's dripping right now. And what we used to do is we used to have hand drills like this. We'd find a nice spot and just start drilling away, drilling away, drilling away. Now we'd only want to go in about an inch or two, nothing too crazy because again, the sap flows underneath the bark, not in the hardwood itself there. Um, and then they would pick, set a bucket down, collect it. Now, it was a very, very time consuming process and whole families would have to be involved in making it worthwhile to collect the sap and turn it into syrup there um, with this bucket process here. Uh, so you'd have whole families coming on out, bringing empty buckets out, replacing them with the full buckets there. and bringing them on down to wherever they set up their sugar <laughs> shack and their, uh, their property there. Um, things have now changed. Currently we use plastics. So when we first started our walk, you saw the big blue plastic line that's coming down from our active sugar bush. Uh, anybody have any idea on how many taps that you should put into a tree? One, one. I hear one. Two. Two. No more than four. No more than four. Any other guesses? You are all correct. Um, so the amount of taps that go in a tree is basically determined by the size of the tree. Uh, you don't necessarily go by the age, you really just go by kind of the circumference of the tree there. So usually about 10 to 12 inches around, um, or diameter I should say, um, you will put one tap in. And basically for every 12 inches of diameter around there, you can put another tap on. Uh, so uh -huh. most farmers practice the rule of putting no more than four in, but you can if you wanted to, if you had a very large <clears throat> specimen there. 
Um, so this guy would just put one on. And what we'll do is, I'm gonna pass this bucket around. You can take a look. This is what's collected just from about this time yesterday. Yep, <laughs> and it mostly is water. Yeah, and if anybody's feeling adventurous, feel free to put your finger up to the end of the of the tap right there and take a tap, uh, take a taste. So that all came out just from yesterday. Oh. You took the cover off from last night when it was raining, right? Yeah, I just took the cover off. <laughs> yeah. One day. Well, that's one day. Pretty good. Holy cow. And some people now, if you go to Wegmans during maple season, you will actually see that they bottle maple water. And you can actually buy it in the store. High calories, huh? Um, no, I'm not really too sure the calorie content on it. I wouldn't think so because it's just the sap. It's, it hasn't been processed at all down to syrup itself. So. Did everybody get a uh, drip that wanted a drip? <laughs> right. So, folks may have noticed when we first walked up, we had this little plate on top of it. Any ideas why we would put a plate on top of it? What's, what's your guess, buddy? Why do they put the top on? Um, well, we don't want things to fall into it, right? So I mean, we've got all that tree up there. So we may have squirrels, we may have chipmunks or other animals climbing up and down there, knocking things in. So we put a little cover on there to help. Slide them right off. Yep, just to help protect that in there. Yeah, bud, what's your question? That is another good reason. You don't want the animals to drink all of your water. Uh, if you folks have a chance in the near future to go to Chestnut Ridge Park, if you go over near Shelter 15, uh, which is on the casino side of the park there, and look at the maple trees behind that shelter, you can see where the porcupines have just had a heyday with peeling all the bark off there. Um, it's really, you, if you're looking in the right spot, you will see it from a distance because the tree just looks like there's something up with it. Um, and we like believe it's from always, porcupines. Like all that? Um, it's all the bark is just completely peeled off. Oh. And you'll see these tiny little needle-like little teeth marks <laughs> all around it too. So. <laughs> How old does a tree have to be before you can start tapping it? So some, some resources out there say that the tree should be 10 years old at least before you start tapping it. A lot of people I talk to, they don't really go by the age of the tree, they go by, by the thickness of it there. Um, and that is just because you could have a 10 year old tree that are from the same seeds that were planted in two totally different areas, they're not gonna grow the same. It's all based on their, their local conditions there. Um, so you pretty much just go by the, by the diameter of it there. So, and um, the nice thing about this too, is this is a great renewable resource. By us tapping these trees every year, it's not hurting the tree or harming the tree at all. You gotta think, you've got the entire circumference of the tree that has got the xylem and phloem going up and down and the sap going up and down. And we are just collecting from a tiny little spot, basically as thick as your pinky there. So it's not harming the tree at all. And that when they pull the taps out, there the tree is gonna heal itself. Just like, just like you would get a scab on your skin if you had a cut or something like that. The tree heals itself there. Um, and unfortunately in this specific spot, I don't have any trees that have the scars, but back in the, I'm not sure if you folks all saw it in the sugar shack, we had a tree cookie, a cutaway of a, of a maple tree where you can see all the scars from all the taps throughout the years there. Um, so one tree could theoretically produce maple syrup for hundreds of years if you're doing it correctly.